One of many things I am grateful for in this moment is I grew up in a church and it helped me to learn about spiritual life and faith and God and the Bible. And they would have us memorize different passages of scripture. And I think the first one that I learned was Psalm 100. And there's a wonderful line in it where it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into the, his courts with praise. Thank the Lord for he is good. And I love that picture that it's gratitude, the offering of thanks that somehow brings us into the presence of the divine, of what is sacred. And that's what we're going to talk about. That's what we're going to do. This is the beginning, not just of thinking about gratitude, but of the gratitude challenge. We're going to become students and practitioners in the time between here and Thanksgiving of the art of gratitude. And what I want to do today for a few moments is invite you to reflect on what would your life be like if you were to become a more grateful person, to be inhabited with a spirit, with perceptions and actions of gratefulness and generosity. And then I want to invite you to commit to that over these next weeks. I want to tell you about maybe the patron saint of gratitude, G.K. Chesterton. And this is actually from a book by the preeminent student uh, researcher, of gratitude in our day, Robert Emmons. Um, Chesterton wrote once, I would maintain that thanks are the highest form of thought and that gratitude is happiness doubled by wonder. Emmons writes about how Chesterton was a prolific author. He wrote close to a hundred books. I cannot imagine that. Produced over 4,000 essays, newspaper articles, constantly incredibly busy and productive. And you might think, as many of us do when we feel a little bit burdened, that he would have been complaining or felt exhausted or burnout. out au contraire. Um, Chesterton's friends, Emmons writes, and acquaintances consistently described him as exuberant and exhilarated by life. To think of Chesterton, one commentator wrote, is to think of gratitude. Gratitude, a sense of wonder, appreciation for life were consistently and constantly expressed in his life and his writing. He delighted in the ordinary, was surprised and awed by his own existence. And this is true in so many passages of his and the existence of everything else. Throughout his life, he set a conscious goal of remaining childlike in his sense of wonder and vowed not to succumb to the monotony and boredom that saps the lives of so many of joy and purpose. Now, do you want to make that vow? Would you like to pursue that kind of life? The sense of wonder in the ordinary is aptly illustrated in this letter to his fiancée, Frances, where he's apologizing for an ink stain on the letter. And this is what Chesterton writes. I love this. I like the cyclo-style ink. It is so inky. I do not think there is anyone who takes quite such fierce pleasure in things being themselves as I do. The startling wetness of water excites and intoxicates me. The fierceness of fire, the steeliness of steel, the unutterable muddiness of mud. It is just the same with people. When we call a man manly or a woman womanly, we touch the deepest philosophy. And of course, this simply echoes the nature of our God, who as he created things, looked at them and saw that they were good and fiercely delighted in each thing he made being itself, the lightness of light and the darkness of dark and the earthiness of earth and the creatureliness of his creatures. Chesterton was so absorbed in the present moment, it was said that he lived in an almost mystical state of exaltation. Present-mindedness came at the cost of absent-mindedness, and his absent-mindedness was legendary. He rarely knew where he was supposed to be at any given hour. He did most of his writing in train stations since he usually missed the train he was supposed to catch. He once hailed a cab to take him to an address that turned out to be across the street. On another occasion, he was sipping wine with his sister-in-law in a wine shop in London when he suddenly remembered that he was shortly due to be giving a lecture in another town. Once he sent a telegram to his wife that read, Am at Market Harborough. Where ought I be? 
And this made me feel really good because I kid you not, I am today in a place where I thought I would not be. Two days ago, I got an email. I was reading through this stuff on Chesterton and the email suddenly jogged my memory and I remembered that I was supposed to be in a very different place, a long, long, long ways away for not one, but two speaking assignments that I had agreed to. So I had to like make last second uh, efforts to shift a plane flight anyway. Uh, it made me feel good to think that it is possible to engage in a way of life where I can be absorbed in this moment and be filled with gratitude at the mystery and miracle of existence. Chesterton wrote this also, the test of all happiness is gratitude. Children are grateful when Santa Claus puts in their stockings gifts of toys or sweets. Could I not be grateful to Santa Claus when he puts in my stockings the gift of two miraculous legs? We thank people for birthday presents. Can I thank no one for the birthday present of birth? And Chesterton, although he was raised with no faith at all, eventually came to be a believer in God. Part of the terrible things about being an atheist is that you can be filled with gratitude and have no one to thank. So this is the beginning of the gratitude challenge. I want to invite you to make the commitment between now and Thanksgiving uh, in a daily way to pursue becoming a more grateful person to begin to fiercely delight in each thing being itself because each thing was made by God and every moment, every breath, this world, our words, our, our time together is a gift from God. And I may, if I choose, be filled with gratitude for it. Now, I wanna give you an invitation or you might take it as a challenge. Very often when folks uh, listen to these podcasts. They do it in kind of an intermittent way, might hit one day, miss another day. I totally get that. That's helpful. That's great. But what I would encourage you to do this time is to uh, make this a part of every day. Robert Emmons was kind of the pioneering guy who discovered the impact of uh, a gratitude journal, writing down the things for which we're grateful. And I want to encourage you to do that. Go get a journal. It can be very cheap. Um, just get a bunch of paper if you want to. But there's something about writing things down that's very powerful, and we will give you help with that in the material that we sent out to show how to actually keep a gratitude journal with different exercises. Um, I believe gratitude has never been needed more. COVID, racism, political polarization that is unbelievable, culture wars, worship wars, actual war in the Ukraine, um, rampant inflation, nobody knowing where the economy is going to be headed, people at odds with each other, cable news just encouraging hatred. Um, gratitude is not some frothy, feel-good, sentimental experience. There's a sociologist, George Simmel, about a century ago who said, gratitude is the moral memory of mankind. It's actually in recognizing the giving and the receiving of gifts and then the bonds of gratitude that happen between a parent and a child, between a friend and a friend, when I'm with somebody who is doing good work that I am the beneficiary of. Gratitude is at the absolute core of human society. It is not optional. It's not an add-on. Um, it is not a failure to take seriously the tragedy and pain in this world. It must come precisely in the midst of the tragedy and the pain of this world that will not be healed in our lives personally or in our society until there are people who are consumed with gratitude. And that is why the writers of Scripture have so much to say about it. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 17 are this magnificent portrait of um, a virtuous life of a character of goodness given by God. And at the summit of it is gratitude. Paul talks about gratitude three times. He says, let the peace of Christ dwell in you richly, for you are called to live in one body in peace and be grateful. Living in harmony, in unity, in delight and connection and servanthood with one another in community is essentially tied to our ability to experience gratitude to God for all of his gifts and especially the gifts of people. 
you might want to get a gratitude partner to help you with this. I, I talk increasingly to people who say they go through these podcasts together with folks in their small group. And so you might want to do that in a small group or just get one other person and say, I want to try to be a little less cranky over the next couple of weeks. And I want to let you know how I'm doing that. You want to partner in that together with me. Uh, and then on aim at Thanksgiving, gratitude is essentially tied to generosity. We live in gratitude for a God of infinite and abundant goodness. And so that's not about me living a more pleasant life. It's about me becoming a more generous person so that other people have reason to be grateful. And so we will want to think each day about how do I become generous with my time and generous with my energy and generous with my finances. And Nancy and I will have a project that we're giving to in a special way uh, in the Thanksgiving season. And I will encourage you to think about that over Thanksgiving as well. And then on Thanksgiving Eve, Wednesday morning, the day before Thanksgiving, we're going to go live. I think Nancy's going to join me for that and love to have as many people as possible join in. And it will just be a uh, uh, Thanksgiving Palooza. And we will express gratitude to God and for one another all together. Um, I had a friend named Quig. And every time I would see Quig, I might tell you more about him in this series. He was, viewed himself as a very ordinary guy. Every time I saw him, he would end with the same words. We have lots to be grateful for. I will see you next time. We have lots to be grateful for. Thanks for joining us. To receive the emails that go along with each video, visit becomenew.me slash subscribe. If you'd like a text alert whenever a new video is posted, text the word BECOME to the phone number 855-888-0444. You can send prayer requests to that number as well. To invite a friend, just share the link becomenew.me. We'll see you next time.